Today I speak with Yulia Divyatkina from Moscow. Yulia is a linguist and is teaching English to children. She's raising her daughter Bella in eight different languages, eight languages. And that is English, Russian, French, Spanish, German, Chinese, Arabic, and they added Italian to the mix half a year ago. And Bella is already a celebrity in Russia, and she appeared in a Russian TV show and many other TV shows. Yulia, I'm so glad to have you on and pick your brain on all of that. Hello, nice to meet you. First, I'd like to know, now you're an English teacher. What, what else is your story with languages? How, how come, what's your connection to languages that made you decide to, to teach uh, so many languages to your daughter? Uh, so I started learning uh, English at school when I was seven years old, just like all, all of my contemporaries did. So um, it was a really good school. And when I finished it, I thought that I could speak English fluently. But one day, when I was a student at the university, I met my French teacher, and uh, she uh, showed me a video of uh, her seven years old uh, child, a seven year old son, who could speak French uh, as a native speaker. I was really impressed with that because I thought my English was really good but when i saw that child uh i under i could i could see the difference he was really fluent in the la in that language so she started telling me uh, her story and uh, she told me that she rose her um, child up as a bilingual uh, even though she was russian she she wasn't uh, a native speaker but she started uh, speaking english uh, russian and french to, the, to her son from, from the very first days of his life, and that was the result. Uh, the, pronunci the pronunciation was just perfect, and uh, uh, his French was really fluent, as I have already told. So I was really impressed uh, with that, and I decided, so uh, when I'm going to have a child, I would do the same thing with, with my child. So when Bella was born, uh, I knew that I would teach her English and Russian. We only started with English and Russian, and I wasn't thinking about seven languages at that time, eight languages. Or, um, but uh, when she was about uh, one one year years old, even a little bit younger, I could see the first results. She could understand uh, everything in both languages. She could react. She could answer like. With her with signs, but she could answer my uh, questions, and uh, that was obvious that uh, she could understand both of those languages. So I decided to add French because I can speak a little bit of French. So I decided to add French to our program, and uh, she was really excited with that. She was she uh, she couldn't speak when she was one year one year. Old, but uh, she could show her interest in, in like uh, when I started speaking French to her, she started jumping uh, and uh, squealing like with joy because she was I, I did I don't know why but she really liked uh, the maybe the sound the sounds that uh, are characteristic for French. So uh, uh, this is how we came up to three languages and we were not thinking about any other languages. But when she was about two years and a half, um, um, I should say first that we have uh, some families uh, we, uh, that we, I mean, they are friends and they also raise up their ch uh, children as a bilingual or multilingual ch uh, children. So uh, some of them told me that uh, Bella is really talented in languages so that it would be really beneficial for her to add one more language and uh, prefer preferably a uh, language that is uh, like not European language, but something different. 
I was rather reluctant, reluctant, but then uh, I decided to add Chinese. And uh, the results, we could see the results, uh, I mean, in about a, a month, we could see the results. She started uh, speaking uh, with short, uh, simple sentences. I, I mean, I got her a native speaker, a Chinese native speaker, who came to play with her and uh, speak Chinese, read some books, and so on. So in, in a month, she could... Uh, she started speaking uh, with, with short sentences in Chinese. Then it was it was like four languages. So it, it was obvious for me that she was really interested in languages and she was uh, rather old. She was about three years old. And I understood that it would be really nice to add some more languages. So then we added Spanish and the results were like in a week. She started speaking Spanish in a week because Spanish is very similar to French and it was really easy to her. Uh, and um, so then I thought that uh, we shouldn't waste time because she was three and it's the best time to uh, the best age for learning languages. So we decided to add German and Arabic. Mm -hmm. uh, that was seven seven languages and we were not planning any other languages but Bella uh, a, a half a year ago Bella um, started asking me about Italian so it was her choice and she, she was talking about too much about Italian so I decided to add Italian mm -hmm. because she was really interested and now she can speak fluently Italian because she's really crazy about it I don't know why she likes it even more than Spanish and any other languages it's like her favorite mm -hmm. that brings up so many questions my first one would be you said that after a year you saw that she would be reacting to English and Russian that she would understand how would you notice that what would you ask her how would you see that she actually understands yeah she, she reacted to uh, simple uh, questions like clap your hands, wave your hand, uh, show me your nose, touch your head and any part of your body. Mm -hmm. uh, she could, could uh, choose the colors when I ask her, uh, uh, the, the, the animals, all the uh, objects around her. No. Uh, no, speak, speak English. I'm busy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Bella. Mm. Your Chinese teacher will come soon, okay? <laughs> Bella, I'm busy right now. So, uh, and another thing which which is very important for for um, Bella and for her languages is that I uh, used Doman's method of early reading. What is it Which, called? Uh, it's Glenn Doman. Mm -hmm. This is an American scientist, Glenn Doman, mm -hmm. and uh, he created uh, um, this uh, method of early reading, which mm -hmm. is for little babies. Mm -hmm. uh, you can start uh, teaching your uh, teaching your child to read or when he's about three or four months old. Mm -hmm. So these are like sight, uh, this is like sight reading, you know, you, sh you show uh, c uh, cards to your child with words on them, with very big uh, letters, which are written mm -hmm. with very big letters, uh, and uh, the child can recognize the words. So you don't teach your child the alphabet or the letters, mm -hmm. you just uh, uh, show him cards with words on them. Okay. Uh, after a while, your child starts recognizing the words, and uh, so when Bella was about 10 months old, she could recognize about 50 words in English and uh, the same thing in Russian. Uh, like, uh, you know, I have a video of that. Like, I showed her a card with the word uh, head on it, and she would touch her head, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I showed her a card with the word clap on it and she would clap her hands and uh, she could do the same thing with about 50 words. So it, 
it starts with, with 50 words. Then the child, uh, w when you show a lot of cards to the child, the child starts understand which uh, is the sound for, for each uh, letter. So which letter makes which sound? This is he makes this analysis, and uh, then he starts realizing that. And when he comes up to that, uh, he can read new words, not only those that have been already showed to, to the child. So this is how it works. So uh, when w Bella was about two years old, she could read uh, simple texts with new words in them and uh, she could do the same thing in Russian and in, in English. And when we added Fran French, she could do the same thing in, in French. So it's, it's 50 words and then that's enough to be able to... No, no, no. It, it only starts with 50 words. Okay. First you have to... You need your child to learn to recognize those 50 words. Mm -hmm. And after that you should add new words every day uh, you should add about five new cards every day and you should uh, do a lot of work actually with those cards it's not only 50 words it's about for some children it's about uh, 300 or 400 words uh, which is enough for them to uh, to make that um, I mean, to figure out which uh, letter makes which sound. This is what we need to, to this is what we need to uh, achieve when we do that, is that the child understands all by himself which letter makes which sound. Uh, for some children, 300 or 400 words is enough, and for some children, it might be about 1,000 or 2,000 words. It, so it depends on the child. Uh, so it's basically like language learning because the problem is with school language learning is you learn the structure of the language before you learn the language. And here you just reverse the process. The same thing as, as a child, the, the same way a child learns a language by yeah. pattern recognition, not by being taught the grammar and the words. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think this is the basis of uh, Glenn Doman's method uh, that uh, learning reading is the same as uh, learning uh, to speak a language. Mm -hmm. So he thinks these processes are, are very similar. Okay. And now to go back to Italian as the eighth language, how did she find out about Italian and like did she hear it somewhere and she said I want to learn that language yeah yeah, yeah exactly oh, when we were uh, on a playground uh, we were in France and uh, there were lots of uh, children there from different countries we were on our holiday there uh, so there were children from all the countries and all the languages that Bella could speak so mm -hmm. she could uh, she could play with all the children on the playground That's but awesome. then uh, some Italian children came and Bella asked me, Mama, what's that language? I don't know that language. I, I told her, it's Italian. You, know, you, don't, uh, you don't learn Italian. Um, but she told me, I, I, I like it. I want to speak Italian too. <laughs> this is how it started. But I thought it was too much with all, with all those seven languages. But uh, then she, she found an app on her iPad which has 15 languages in that in it and she started learning some Italian words uh, on that app mm -hmm. uh, then I, I could see that she was really interested and I uh, let her watch some videos in Italian uh, and <laughs> after those videos she started speaking with simple sentences and then I then I understood that uh, I should get her a teacher Mm -hmm. an Italian teacher. And with eight languages at the same time, are there some languages that are neglected a little bit or is she learning all of them in the same, in the same, like as much time? How does that work? Yeah, yes. Uh, I try to make uh, all the languages, uh, I mean, the, I try to keep the level of all those languages uh, the same, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so so she usually has about three times each language. Uh, I mean, classes in all the languages. She has about three times a week. 
in all the languages, but only with Chinese, we do it five times a week because Chinese is uh, more difficult mm. than other languages. Okay. And the pronunciation is more difficult. And do you think she will come up with more languages that you would like to learn within the next <laughs> few years? Uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, uh, propose to her, but only if she uh, chooses so. Mm -hmm. Because she is really interested when we go, we now go around the world uh, on different TV shows. And uh, the last uh, TV show was in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And she was really interested because that was a new language for her. And she even learned some words and sentences in that language. And I can see that she's really interested. So if she really if she, if she would be really interested in any language, maybe I will let her learn that. But mm -hmm. it, it will be her choice. Okay. And about the understanding, you said that after a month she would start speaking Italian, you said, right? Italian was much, much faster because Italian is much, is very much similar yeah. Spanish and French so uh, it, it was really fast like she watched a video in Italian only oh, one time or two times and she could make uh, her own sentences after one uh, wow. yeah that was really impressive like like those were not very difficult sentences like she could say I drink water or I eat an apple, something like that. Mm -hmm. But she could do that. And how quickly do you think she actually, until she actually starts to understand a new language, maybe in comparison to what it was a few years ago and to, in comparison to what it is now? Like, how do you, when do you think, okay, now she really starts to grasp the concept of the language and understands it in a way maybe a contemporary would? Uh, <clears throat> I would say that it depends on the language because mm -hmm. as I have already told you, Italian, Spanish and French are mm -hmm. very similar. So it was really easy for her because she <laughs> lots of words that are the same. And I, it, I think that like she could understand it at once because she could understand some of the words and she could figure out the meaning of, of the sentences. Uh, but when we added Arabic, Arabic is totally different from all the other uh, uh, languages. It took her some time, I think about two months mm -hmm. to, to start uh, speaking. I think she could understand some... Some easy sentences she could understand very quickly, but um, she could. She started speaking it uh, in about two months, mm -hmm. uh, so it was a little bit longer with with Arabic. Okay. Maybe because we were not very lucky with the teacher, because it always depends on the teacher. Uh, if she likes the teacher, the teacher makes the class like fun then uh, sh she would do it really quickly. But uh, if the teacher is not very experienced in working with little children, it might be a problem, you know. Okay. So you really need a teacher that knows how to work with children. Absolutely. It's a, yeah. It's not only a native speaker ch uh, teacher, but, only, but, but also a teacher who knows how, what to do with little children. And... Uh, it uh, might be a problem to find a teacher like that. Mm -hmm. And so now you said that she memorizes sentences and words really quickly. Does that also apply to other domains? Like, does she also memorize things that have nothing to do with languages? Do you, do you think that, or, or is it really restricted to languages? Um, no, I think her memory is really good uh, and it's, it relates to all the other spheres. She could uh, remember information very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not only with the languages. Uh, and uh, thanks to that uh, Doman's method, or thanks to that early reading method, 
she can, uh, for example, she can memorize a lot of uh, Chinese characters, which mm -hmm. is really difficult. But she can, uh, like, look at the character once or twice, and she can remember it. Mm -hmm. so. And so, so can she read more or less, like basic Chinese, or, or just a few signs? Yeah, she knows about uh, 300 or 400 Chinese characters and she can read simple text with those characters. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, uh, Chinese uh, reading is not like... Yeah, uh, of course. Like in other languages, so she has to learn new characters every day and uh, this is what we are doing right now. And uh, she... Um, it's it's very easy for her. Mm -hmm. And how much do you think of that as nature versus nurture? So how much do you think she was born with it? And how much do you think it's an interest that she has or that maybe an interest that you sparked in her by introducing her to so many languages? What do you think? I think... Um, well, she obviously does have a talent in that but mm -hmm. i think it's mostly it's the work that i did during the first year of her life uh i made uh english and russian i mean i mean i made uh, those languages really easy for her mm -hmm. so when we added something else she uh was ready for that and it was she didn't think of that uh, as about uh, some hard work to do. She, it, it was like really fun for her. It, it's her um, um, and, and that's why all the other languages are so easy for her because she knows uh, that it's it, it's not difficult. She is she knows that it's not like studying something or like it, it's not hard work for her mm -hmm. that's because she uh how to say that she, she uh, i don't know how to say that so. but that, that's because this is her relation to to her or to to that to the to the languages mm -hmm. and so obviously she's really interested in languages. Is there anything else? Other, what other interests does she have? Are they all related to languages or does she have some interests that are completely outside of that realm? Uh, she really likes uh, painting. Uh, she has painting classes as well. I mean... Um... <clears throat> She can spend a lot of time painting, mm -hmm. all by herself or with a teacher or with, uh, with with me or with her grandma. She 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 really likes that. She she doesn't really like math or okay. something like that. <laughs> but th this is really hard for her because we try to teach her some math, but it's really hard. She doesn't like that and uh, she doesn't show any interest. Mm -hmm. And what I what I wanted to say, what I what I just remembered. So, what I think is really important that you make language learning fun for her. It's not like she has to go to class, but it's yeah. always playful, and she enjoys the enjoys mm -hmm. her classes. Exactly. Let's say it this way. And we try to um, um, <clears throat> to involve her in some activities in in different languages. For example. She has a cooking class with her French teacher or with, n normally with her French teacher and sometimes with her Arabic teacher. She really likes cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, she also has a class uh, of uh, roller skating in uh, Spanish with a Spanish trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, so they learn how to roller skate, and but they speak Spanish all the time. Um she has. Uh, she went to drama classes in English 
uh, so the teacher was a, an, an English native speaker, and there was a group of other children who spoke uh, English. They were not, they were all Russian children, but they could speak English. So all the class was in English. Mm-hmm. So we tried to find some uh, activities that she's interested in, and we tried to. Uh, to make it in different languages. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not all. So it's not only sitting at home and reading mm-hmm. books and uh, uh, playing with toys, but something that is really uh, interesting. I mean, these are normal activities for a four-year-old child, but in connection with different languages. Mm-hmm. So, so how old is she now? Four years or five years? Uh, she's going to turn. Five in August, okay. almost five. Almost. Mm-hmm. And when did she start grasping the concept of language? Like when did she un- start to understand that those are actually different languages and that she speaks more than an average citizen? When did she start understanding what language actually is? Um, I think that when, when she was about two years old, she could understand that. Mm-hmm. She never mix, uh, mixes languages. She, she knows that if I start uh, speaking English, then she should answer in English. If I start speaking French, then she should answer in French. So she never mixes uh, mm-hmm. languages. But she doesn't uh, realize that other people don't speak so many languages. This mm-hmm. I try to <laughs> explain to, to her, but she... Um, she always like when she plays with her dolls then she can say hello hello what's your name my name is um, my name is Anne so how many languages can you speak so <laughs> she, she doesn't realize that there are people who speak only one language okay. it's... and what was the sentiment that she expressed like when okay maybe that's difficult to say because she doesn't realize that other people don't speak as many languages but does she say anything? Does she think anything about the fact that that yeah, maybe that doesn't make sense. If she doesn't understand that other people speak less languages, then probably she doesn't have any sentiments about that, right? No, she does. Uh, you mean does she think that she's exceptional? Yeah, or, yeah. Or does she think like yeah? Or does she think how great is it that I speak so many languages? No, I don't. Um, I don't think that she uh, thinks about it. I try not to tell her that she is uh, extraordinary or something because I don't want her to uh, to be too proud of herself. So uh, she just and you know there are as I have already told you we uh, have friends uh, that also raise up their children as bi- bilinguals and multilinguals. So she has lots of children around her who also speak different mm-hmm. languages. So it's like normal for her. Okay. And I want to go back to what you said about the different languages that she doesn't mix. So she never actually uses a word from another language when she speaks a certain language? Uh, sometimes uh, uh, she can forget the word, for example, she wants to say something in English and she forgets the word. Like yesterday, she wanted to, to tell me something about a hedgehog and she forgot the, the word mm-hmm. hedgehog in English. So she would just answer me, uh, I mean, ask me, uh, mommy, what's the English for uh, hedgehog? And she would say that in Russian, the word hedgehog. Okay. What's the English for this word? And I would tell her and she would say the sentence again, but with that word. So, so mm-hmm. she would never uh, put a Russian word into an English sentence. Okay, that's very interesting. That's that's what I think what happens with bilinguals very often, that they mm-hmm. they do this code switching. If they don't know a word, they just use use it in another language. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And um, so one question I wanted to ask you about the level of her languages. So I know that many parents that even are thinking about raising their children with two languages, they are afraid that uh, that their native language won't be as well developed. So what do you say about that? And what do you think about Bella's level of Russian? Does she speak as well as other children her age? Or does she speak even better or worse? What do you think about her level of Russian? I think she's 
um, her level of Russian is uh, the same as uh, uh, the children of her age mm -hmm. have. Okay. So, no, she does make mistakes in Russian, uh, and uh, but and in other languages, of course, because she she's only five, and uh, but it's not worse than her. Uh, that, than children of her age. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do, is, does she spend most? Does she spend most time with Russian? I mean, in comparison to other languages, is that the yeah. language she speaks most? Yes, sure, because we speak it in family, and all the members of our family speak mm -hmm. only Russian to her. Okay, interesting. And now I would like to get a little bit into her learning routines. So you said that she learns a language three times a week. She has a language class three times a week for an hour. Yeah. And what other... No, no, for an hour, uh, it's usually an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. So that's four and a half hours per week per language, except for Chinese. Yeah, except for Chinese. And, mm. and so... Those are the six languages, and then Chinese has more, and then all the other times she speaks Russian or she speaks. She has friends that speak different languages. How does that work? Um, she has uh, friends. I mean, children who come to our house and they have like uh, classes together. Uh, about two or three children, for example, they all can speak French. Mm -hmm. So we get our French teacher and they just play together and spend some time together in French. Mm -hmm. They can go for a walk, they can go to the zoo, they can stay at home and play with their toys, uh, but they spend time together. Mm -hmm. So it's like these... that. Hmm? So it's these language classes and then. And then on top of that, she spends time with friends and speaks different languages. So that, that's her learning routines. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this is how it works. Uh, she spends time with her uh, friends, but uh, with a teacher who can help them to mm -hmm. interact, uh, who can okay. make. Oh. And now it seems that you really educated yourself about all these methods. You mentioned the one with the reading. What was it again? What was the name? It's a Glenn Doman. Glenn Doman. Glenn Doman is an American scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Doman's early reading, early okay. reading method. Okay. I, I just wanted to, to tell you that this uh, early reading, the fact that she started reading when she was about two years old, it was very helpful for learning languages because when she can see a mm. word, I mean, the written form of a word, it's much easier for her to remember it, mm -hmm. you know? So we, we always started learning a new language with reading. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we added Spanish, uh, I showed her some cards with uh, Spanish words and she could uh, remember those words very quickly. Like in the first day when she, when we started uh, Spanish uh, and the first day, on the first day, she learned about 100 words and wow. uh, the written form and, and there was an application on her iPad uh, where you where your task is to find the word for the picture uh, you, you have to to drag the word to the picture like mm -hmm. animals from parts of the body so uh, on the first day she learned about uh, 100 words and she could do all those tasks with no mistakes wow that's very impressive and she and the, the most important thing that she was interested in that I never made her do that. Mm -hmm. she, would, she would take the iPad and play that game and it was really mm -hmm. <laughs> like enjoyable for her. Very nice. Because reading because reading is easy for her as mm -hmm. well as well as uh, speaking languages. Mm -hmm. She doesn't think of reading as about something difficult. She always thinks that it's very easy mm -hmm. because she knows the letters of the uh, it's um, it works like that. Once the child uh, understands the concept of reading in one language, it's very easy for for 
for the child to start reading in a different language, especially if uh, the letters are similar. Uh, the letters of the English alphabet are similar mm -hmm. yeah. French, uh, and so on. So she started reading in Spanish. It, it was like um, she did it together, reading and uh, uh, speaking. Uh, it, 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 we we always do it like that. We always uh, uh, start a new language in connection with uh, reading. Mm -hmm. And so you you said you use this domain method. And what mm -hmm. other? How how did you educate yourself on all these topics? Like what else did you learn? How did you decide to use this these learning routines? How did you find out so much about all of that? Uh, well, I read, um, I get all the information from the internet, from the blogs of other parents who raise up their children as bilinguals. Mm -hmm. So they share information about, uh, I only started as I, as I have told you, I started with English. Mm -hmm. When I started, uh, speaking English to her, I found out that I didn't know a lot of things, how to say lots of uh, things in English. Uh, those were things related to little babies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started looking for some information about that on the internet, and I find lots of interesting blogs uh, that uh, gave information about that. And I also started learning about uh, something different uh, that is uh and uh, about uh, that Glenn Doman's method as well mm -hmm. I you... wasn't yes sorry uh, I wasn't planning to uh, teach her reading at that early age but when I read about that and I uh, found out about the fan benefits that it gives uh, I decided to try mm -hmm. do you have any recommendations for blogs or books or anything else uh, well, I do have some recommendations, but those blogs are all in Russian. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, I can yeah, sure add them. Sure. I'll, maybe Google Translate does a good job for people that are interested. Or maybe somebody speaks Russian who is interested. So mm -hmm. do you have some of the top of your head or do you want to send them to me later? Yeah, I will send them to you later. Okay. And any books that you can recommend? Doman, is, did he write a book about that, or how did? Yes, he he wrote lo lots of books about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can find those books easily on the internet. Just to Glenn Doman's method, and you will mm -hmm. get lots. Any other thought leaders on that topic? Mm. <clears throat> no, I cannot think of anything okay. else. That's great then yeah, send them to me and I'll, I'll, make, I'll make sure to link to them. And um, just as my last question, do you have any advice other than what we talked about for parents that want to learn, uh, that want to raise their children with two or three or maybe even more languages? Hmm. Yes, maybe if you start with teaching two or more languages to a little baby, uh, it's very easy for to do because you just have to talk in different languages and you should never mix them. For example, as we did it, uh, we, <clears throat> I mean, on Monday we spoke Russian uh, all day long from the very morning, from, from the morning till evening. And on Tuesday we spoke English all day long. And so on Wednesday, we spoke Russian again, and on Thursday, we spoke English. So, um, and I checked that the, the time that we dedicated to both languages was uh, the same, you know, so that mm -hmm. the level would be the same. Mm -hmm. um, and I also tried to talk to her in different languages uh, in the same situation. I mean, if today I uh, speak Russian to her during best time, then tomorrow I have to uh, talk about the same things uh, during best time in English so that she would know uh, how to express herself in 
those situations in both languages. Because if you always uh, uh, speak English at best time and you never speak Russian at best time, then she would obviously uh, not be able to say anything in that situation in Russian, mm -hmm. you know. So you have to check that you uh, <clears throat> uh, make her go through all those situations in different languages. If you, uh, it's a little bit difficult with seven languages, mm, yeah. but um, there are actually uh, some languages that I try to concentrate on, and those are Russian, English, French, and Chinese. Mm -hmm. Others are also very important, but uh, those were actually the, the languages that we started with. So uh, I try to I try to pay more attention to to those languages. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so she does speak them a little bit better than the other four. No, that doesn't. I don't think so. Okay, interesting. Because it's uh, it's always uh, depends on the teacher. Uh, sometimes I want her to have uh, some interesting classes in French, but I just cannot find a French teacher who can do that. Mm -hmm. And I and I managed to find uh, some very nice teachers in Spanish. So this is how they move on to Spanish instead of French. So, but um, my choice, I told you, these four languages, th this is my choice, but mm -hmm. it's never like I want it to, to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, great. This has been super helpful. Is there anything else you would like to add p where people should go to find out more about you or, or Bella or anything uh, you, you want to give people on the way? This on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a YouTube channel. We have an a, our, an Instagram account where I try to share uh, some of our experience. Mm -hmm. This is where you can find us. Well, I also have a Russian blog uh, where I described our experience from um, from the age of nine months. I started uh, each month I wrote like a report about what we did, about what activities we did to uh, in reading, in English and Russian and so on. So and I um, made those reports until she was three mm -hmm. or four, about four, maybe three and a half. So there is lots of information there and lots of materials that we used. What's the name of the blog? Uh, it's <clears throat> I, I can send it to you later because it's it's in Russian. It's a Russian social network uh, which is about early education. Okay, great. And um, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, I'll link to all of it, but just just if people only listen to this interview. Okay, it's Bella Devyatkina. Bella Devyatkina. It's the name of the of the YouTube channel. Okay. Great. I'll, I'll make sure to link to all of it and also the Russian blogs that, that you were speaking about. Mm -hmm. Great. That was so insightful, so interesting. Um, yeah. Any Anything to add or do you think we talked about everything? Uh, yes, I think uh, I have mentioned everything. Great. Thank you so much for participating. I'm sure this will be really helpful to parents that want to raise their children with more than one language. Mm hmm. Yeah, I hope so. Great. Thanks so much again. Bye. Bye.